Welcome to the Peace and Possibilities Podcast. This is Julie Bruns, and you are about to be inspired. I am so excited to share my conversations with amazing people from all walks of life who figured out how to be happy, peaceful, and content doing work they love and making the world a better place so that you can see what's possible for your life. I can't wait to hear what you think. Send me an email and let me know one thing you're taking away from this episode. And never forget, anything really is possible. All right, welcome to this episode, everyone. My guest this week is Tony Anderson. And Tony and I met um, recently at um, a conference I went to a couple months ago, Tony. And um, I wanted to tell you that I, so it was affiliated. I, I learned about it through my work. Um, at Illinois Tech, and I it was affiliated with Illinois Tech, kind of, um, and some of the people that were there that day, I'd never met because I'm kind of new, um, and that was just a really cool event and, and interesting. I learned a lot. I was very, I'm, I'm glad I went. It was very, lots of really great insights, but I do remember noticing you in the room earlier, and I remember thinking, oh, she looks cool. I want to talk to her, and um, I think, I don't know who you were sitting with. Was it your husband? A uh, partner, yes, yes. Okay, yeah. Um, and I just remember both of you looking very stylish too. Um, and just thinking, oh, they they seem like they'd be fun to get to know. And um, that's all I was thinking. And then the conference started. And then later I thought, okay, I'm gonna reach out to a couple ladies here that I um and this is how I just do it. I just reach out to people that I feel like would be fun to talk to and learn from. And um that's why you're here today. And I reached out and and you said yes. Yeah. So thank you. Right on, right on. Well, great. I'm glad you were at the conference and glad yeah. we met there. <laughs> and thank yeah, you. Me too. Having. Me too. <laughs> thank you. Um, and I loved your energy too. I loved how you, you know, you were grounding everyone with the meditation and stuff. And I've been doing that for over five, like six years now. Um, so it was just really nice to to be in an event that was embracing that and 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 thinking it's a good way to start instead of just like talking about it, actually doing it was pretty cool too. Right on, right on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so tell everyone what you do. So um, I'm still unsure about what you what you do what you, in the world. Um, and um, if you ever, if you all along your life saw yourself doing what you're doing now or what your journey was to get where you are today. Um, that's so a fascinating question. So um, when I was a little girl, uh, two profound experiences kind of shaped my nature. And uh, one of them was the separation of my mom and dad. And the other was my going to camp, summer camp, resident summer camp. Mm -hmm. And uh, two of the things that, that, that I was grappling with uh, as a young person is, you know, one, uh, someone says, what do you want to be? And I said, a marriage counselor. Um, because in my mind, you know, there was something in the realm of relationship that needed to be worked on. And in my young mind, I thought I could have maybe said something or did something that would have changed the trajectory mm. of this separation. So that was one part of my early, early psychology, waking up in the realm of thinking about relationships and thinking about harmonizing relationships and who I could be to that. I just only had the language of a marriage counselor. Okay, that's so funny. <laughs> You know, I just how old were you when that was when you said marriage counselor? How old were you? I think that I might have been about eleven. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Just and I think it was more so, you know, my parents broke up early. You know, I was I was like two, three years old when they separated. But and watching my mom become a single parent and doing all the things. And I just always imagined, gosh, if I could maybe if I had just known something or said something, um, maybe she wouldn't be alone, maybe they could have worked it out, you know, in my early thinking, I think all kids think they could have done something different yeah. um, in order to stop that from happening. And then the other thing was, of course, my um, total liberation in nature, just going and as a urban South Side Chicago girl, I, I felt pretty scripted growing up, um, that it seemed to be everything that I was entering there seemed to already be a prescript about my being hmm. and that. And, and when I went to nature for the first time, I was seven and a half when I went to <laughs> overnight camp for the first time, it was just a weekend at this camp Algonquin in Chicago. And uh, it was the first time that I felt unscripted in who I was. Like I had this permission to just be anything I felt because it seemed to be that's what nature was doing, just responding to whatever it was up to in a particular yeah. day. 
And so those two things kind of, I, I think, started the um, hybrid of my energy of being a person who wanted to think about the realm of relationships and human dynamics, and also a person wanting to have a big part of harmonizing myself with nature and using nature as a way to show us who we really are. And that's basically who I am now as an adult um, through many different uh, change, of course, mm -hmm. derailments, delays, that I'm pretty am a person who is is really committed to helping us understand who we are in relationship to one another. And more importantly, that relationship uh, that we could most be replicating that nature does so well. That's awesome. So what's like, so um, when you, so you, so you're, you're in seven, you're seven years old, you're in this camp, you're like, wow, nature, like this is, is unbelievable. Like, how did you, how did you take that experience? And, you know, as you're going through your education, you know, early on junior high, high school, I don't, I don't know if you went to, um, to college or not, how did you say, okay, I'm going to incorporate, I'm going to make sure I incorporate that into what I end up doing with my life. Or was it just, you moved through life in a different way. And so all of your experiences were, were tied back to that one experience. What was, how did you, how did you mesh all of it. I wish that it could it could be that foretelling and strategic and intentional. <laughs> <laughs> but of course it didn't happen that way. Um I was uh you know in, in the disruption of my person, I became somebody who had to survive and and pay rent and figure things out. So I entered the workforce pretty early as just anything I could be um that would pay my, my rent. And um and in that experience, I always found myself being very far apart from who I thought I was going to be and who I was actually performing as. And in the pain of that separation from myself, I realized that that's exactly what's happening to the majority of us, is that there is this great cavernous dif distance between who we want to be and who we are. And then this gap, there is great suffering. And if I could figure out a way to reclaim and close the distance of that gap myself on my life, then perhaps I could show other people how to do that. So through working as an executive assistant to a program manager, to a, you name it, I've done it. Um, I've made sandwiches, I've waited tables, I've ran departments, I've been every single thing you can imagine. And in the through line of all of that, what I noticed is that um, I was working always in the realm of helping teams understand their human relations, no matter what my role was, it just seemed to be the, the truest thing about my person. And then I was always escaping to nature to recover <laughs> from that work. And so uh, let's fast forward to my daughter being born in the year 2000. I was 30 and really thinking about the parts of my life that I wanted replicated for her. And uh Nature was that big experience that I knew helped her. I moved to Atlanta with her, came back, worked for a company, got really sick. And in that enlightenment period, I realized that being with children in nature is really what I wanted to be because I could help develop the consciousness of young people so that they would be in a realm of consciousness that would be naturally relational to everything. Um, and if we could get them early, then I can start to both work on their so their their eco social sociology. Um, and so uh, I started an organization by being kind of the camp mom, the van mom that would take all the kids out to nature and take them to the park and take them up to the blue mountains to overnight camp and teach them how to make fire and all those things that I was doing as a little girl. And what was happening in those circles is that these youth started to reveal themselves, reveal their need for healing, their need for nurturing and love. And that's how my world started to kind of come together. And then the families would need support and healing. And so then my world started to come together uh, where I was spending a lot of time both healing the human realm of things and also introducing nature to all of these youth and community. And, and my world started to, to collide. <laughs> and mm -hmm. now as an adult, um, uh, I practice those things through different entities. I have a program called Space Share Lab, which is now uh, the place that all the healing work takes place where we can have 
practitioners of color uh, come into communities of color and help them get access to these different healing modalities that are usually kind of like, you know, Lululemon Whole Foods access to healing. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but now we can actually afford to have healing at every corner of the community. I'm doing it as Mindful Rant, a coaching and consulting practice that helps people with both, you know, collective strategy and family and individual life strategy. Of course, my flagship program was Sacred Keeper Sustainability Lab, which I ran for 10 years in Bronzeville. And that was the eco-conscious community I was building for youth um, in my community to really, you know, not learn how to be one, uh, to see nature, but just to learn how they already are in those harmonies with nature. Um, and so I started to play in these different, what I call sandboxes of my mind and then pulling all of that work into the world through me, but it was not intentional at first. It was just kind of, you know, saying all that to say is somewhere in me, the sociologist, counselor, psychologist that wanted this marriage counseling reality and this nature girl are somehow they ended up being real for me through a lot of different twists and turns. Um, but I'm proud to say that somehow that little girl is being very satiated in her work right now. <laughs> I bet. It's so cool. It's like a full circle that you, like the thing that was like so impactful for you at seven years old, which is, you know, it's, 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 it's not common that things are, I mean, you might have experiences, but you can't really articulate what it is, you know, at certain ages, but to say that that was a big thing for you at seven. And then to come back and say, okay, I want to give that to my daughter or something similar. And then just to say, I'm just going to take these kids here and I'm going to do this. I'm going to go and you're doing all the things that were so healing and, and, and impactful for you little by little. And now it's like, okay, well, you built, you can, you can easily, not easily, but you end up going back to the things that you were kind of um, imagining in your mind anyways, and probably wondering how you could ever actually uh, make a living or, or have an impact doing those things because you're like oh I'll just be out in nature it's like no 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 there's 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 people that need those experiences and I can kind of be an advocate for that or a facilitator of that and it's, of course it's no accident that that's what you're doing now because that's what was so needed for you which is it's the same reason I wrote my book <clears throat> because I wrote I wrote it because I wish I had the advice that I'm giving now when I was in yes. my 20s and late teens and I mean there was people there were people few people around me but you know it was different back then you didn't I mean, you talked about what you wanted and, but you didn't, the possibilities, it just wasn't, it's just, it's just not the same. Um, so that's, I did the same thing. It's like, I, what, what would I wish I would have known or couldn't, could have used back then? And I wrote, uh, you know, I built that for other people. So they don't have to wonder where is it? It's like, oh, it's, it's here. It's all here for you. Um, all you have to do is ask or, you know, look around. It's all, it's all there. You don't have to just do everything on your own and, and fight through it. And, you know, obviously Absolutely. you have to experiences and you have to learn and grow, but it doesn't have to be, we can help each other do it through it, you know, the nurturing and the healing and all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. All right. So how, so now you are, so now you have this coaching consulting business and you have these um, camps, you have this space, space years lab, you called it? Is that space, what called? Share. space share lab. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so do you, so, um, with all of that, so now you're in this place where you're taking all your gifts and all the stuff that's super important to you and, 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 and being on the world doing it, what, what kept you peaceful and happy and content along the way while you were figuring all this out and to, you know, making sure that you had nature in your life and, and, um, I, I can guess now what the answer is going to be, like how you were, <laughs> how you were, how you were nurturing yourself and healing and all of that while you were trying to figure out where you were going to end up in your, in your life now, how did you do all that? Or what was your, what tools were you using? Well, one, I was not happy and content along the way, <laughs> you know, I think, um, I, I'm just getting to the mastery of being able to look through that lens. Um, you know, in my mind somewhere, there was a scrapping and struggling and fighting for, and, um, I've recently been able to look back at what I, I sensed as burden, um, and, um, a lack of way, uh, you know, kind of as, you know, that was happiness happening all along. I didn't necessarily know that those moments were gifts. Um, but now I'm at the place where I can say that if I looked back on what I did to self-soothe through uh, what felt kind of hellish in some points, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, it is that nature play? Um, 
in a certain level of self-interrogation, I think what soothed me is staying radically honest with myself. Um, because I think that's where the fear monsters were <laughs> is, you know, and that self-interrogation. And if, they, if there's a way that I can learn to interrogate my fears, um, to work through them so that I can see them as really entry points to possibility, then I can feel less daunted. And I just got good at asking myself, what am I scared of? Because that was really where all the limitations really were. And I knew that asking myself that question would give me some space for happiness. Um, but I, I admit that as I was moving through it all, just felt like a, a force calling somehow. Like, even though I was this little girl that said, I wanted all of this, be careful for the life you wish for, right? Mm -hmm. and so as I was going through the preparation for all of this, uh, sometimes those lessons didn't necessarily feel like a setup for all of this. <laughs> it felt like maybe a derailment, but it was really just being clarifying. So I think what really soothed me was me just getting really good at understanding where my own mental landmines were and using that kind of way of working through that as a balm. Uh, to right size where I was with anything. So I think that's the habit that had me. And now because I trust that so much, mm -hmm. that brings happiness to me. Yeah, I love that. It's uh, what you said a lot. Of, I was writing down some of what you're saying, like that, like being radically honest with yourself. But you're just like, those are those those things that you didn't realize were gifts. Those moments were, were gifts, were entry ways, entry entry points to possibilities because it's it's like there's always the learning is obviously when you're in it you're like what is this and this is stressful or this is hurt hurting me or whatever I'm trying to figure this out I don't have the answer why don't I whatever it is asking yourself the questions I've, I've been really good at that my whole life too like okay what does this mean or figure trying to figure it out figure it out mm -hmm. um being naturally curious I think helps um instead of looking outside for answers to looking inside but thinking yeah. of them as entry points or possibilities it's just it's a beautiful way of considering it Instead of just like, oh, what's this here to teach me? You know, like Oprah used to always say, like, what's this? Um, I, I forget how she used to word it, but, you know, there's something there to teach you. You know, what I'm supposed to learn from this. But yeah. that feels like it's a, a lesson. Of course, it's a lesson, but it feels more like, all right, what's the lesson? Just give it to me now and then I'll get over it and, and go on to the next thing. But entry point to possibility is just a nicer way of, of thinking about it, like that it's um, something good's going to come of it instead of just like you had to learn that some that hard thing over there. So now you can have this better thing. And it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. Yeah. 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 It's a wayfinding is what I've learned is mm -hmm. sometimes the, the moment of contrast is really a way, a way through um, if we can see it that way. But yeah. I can't say that I was all like graceful and knew all yeah. that while I was going through my journey. It's something in hindsight I've learned to see. And now I'm very proactive in that reaching for that when I'm a little bit daunted by things, but it's not something I was graceful about the the time. I can, I can say simply nature is what I did to recover from that lack of mastery. Um, but now I, I, I don't use nature as the only solution. I know that I'm, I'm also part of that solution. Yeah, that's a good great realization. Is there anything, what advice when you have, when you talk, so you, these, these kids at the camp you bring, and then the coaching and account consulting you do, what do you, when, when people ask you for advice, like, oh, I really want to be this, or I haven't found my way yet. It's not happening for me. I'm sure you get questions like that a lot, probably, especially from young girls. What, yeah. what's, what's the best career advice you give them? Or what do you, what's like your go-to thing to say? You know, I, I'm sure there are things. I know there's things what I say when younger people ask me, what's, what's the, some of the advice you give? Yeah. Um, I always try to kind of, my question is, what do you desire and why, you know, like if you can really ask yourself, why do you want a thing and not just what do you want, but why do you want it and really get honest about that answer? Do you want it because your parents told you to, do you want it because you're four generations in and now you feel obligated and loyal to that legacy? Do you want it mm -hmm. because you want money and that's all you're motivated by. You don't really care what the job is. You just want some cash or you motivated because you're alive inside and you can't sleep and it chews you up all day, all night. And it's something that you just voraciously want. Get to the why. If you can get to the why of why you want it, then you can organize for it because nothing will stop you once you can really know what you're motivated by. But sometimes 
we want things and we're not really clear on why we want them. Yeah. And then we end up paying the consequence for the lack of that interrogation on the back end. I know tons of adults that are going back to school, unlearning, relearning, because they never really interrogated the why. Um, and yeah. in my opinion, 18 and 19 is too young to determine a lifelong why. Mm -hmm. um, and, and our children are up against a lot of pressure to figure out what an entire life trajectory is going to be at the age of 18. Yeah. And so one of the things that I do is just go, you don't have to know. Yeah. And you take some time to explore. And yeah. that's whether you're an adult or a child, you can take yeah. some time to, to fail, take some time to try it out, because that's the only way you're really going to know if this is a true desire and what it's motivated by. Um, is if you fail it a couple of times first. So my first recommendation is to just ask the, why do you want it? What do you want? Why do you want it? Why do you want it? Yeah. I love that. It's a great, it's a great follow up question because people say, well, I just want a good job. It's like, you don't, you, know, you want a good job. So you can what? So you can travel, so you can have a family, so you can uh, totally. make great money. Yeah. What is it? Um, it? It's a, it's a great question. And it's also, I totally agree with you it's deciding in 18, 19, 20, 25, even it's like, for your whole life, but you, you have to choose something. So choose, so go towards the thing that is lighting you up a little bit, has you curious or whatever. I also tell younger people like, and you'll know pretty quick, like if this is really what you think you want to hear and you have a great why for it, go for it, go for it now. And it doesn't have to be forever. This decision is, <clears throat> this could be six months, it could be six weeks, but more than likely you're going to know pretty quickly in, and then at least you tried it. And if it's like you said, you're failing and it's not what you thought you wanted, it's really not failing. You're just, you're getting information. You're, you're gathering information, you're gathering research and you're like, wow, I, I was wrong. I don't really want this. Or um, it, it feels good, but it's not exactly what I want to do. Okay. Well, you have a couple more pieces of information now, but if you're trying to figure it all out, I totally agree. Just pick a major at 18 and like just study this. And then when you graduate, you'll have a job and it's like rarely ever. Exactly and that's ever, it. <laughs> especially at that age. Yeah. And you're and there's so much pressure, especially when you're paying a lot for your education. Okay, well now I need to go do this. And it's like you can you can mix it in with other things. Um, what else is possible? And and yeah, there's there's, there's so much and it, it's, there's so much luckier than we were because growing up, you know, I had to go to the library to do my research. I had to go yeah. open up a massive book and ask the librarian, how do I find training companies in Chicago so I can go do this job that I think I want to do? It's like that's just everything's at your fingertips. It takes seconds to to find a company name or whatever it is. And, and 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 figure out how to try something. So they're in a lot better. So there's more pressure for them and it costs more money, but they're in a lot better place to figure it out sooner. Exactly. And more resources at the fingertips. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So is there anything you wish you'd learned earlier in your life or career? Like you're like oh, something you. I know there's a couple of things I can I can think of. Like it's just one. A lot, a lot of stuff. Um, I think. Uh, for me, you know, it's always in the internal place for me that uh, I just wish that I had trusted myself a little bit more that I, I think, um, particularly as a woman of color, your, your experience is so denied that it atrophies a part of your intuition, mm -hmm. um, your ability to really trust yourself based on everyone's prescriptive. And you're so busy trying to like, you know, navigate what your center beliefs are versus what everybody is like pushing your identity around to be, that being able to really center into what you desire, why you want it, and to trust it uh, and trust what it's telling you is something that I wish I had done sooner because as I've gotten really good at trusting her, magical things happen as a result. And I just... I wish that I had employed a little bit more of that magic in my life earlier by just trusting my instincts, trusting what I know for myself and not letting the scripted world pull me away from that trust. Uh, so I would just, for all my young people, just trust yourself because uh, I know it's hard. Adults are building trust in you. The world yeah. is building trust in, in young identity. And mm -hmm. so it, it can be kind of invalidating to a young person because, you know, you've got to prove that you're an adult. You got to prove that you can handle that thought or that responsibility. So as the world builds and challenges trust in our young people, we have to remember how it impacts their ability to trust themselves. Yeah. Um, and so I think if anything, that would be the thing I go back and tell myself over. I, I do it um, for young college students. Now I'm like, you know, those, those the first thing they'll say is, I really want to do this, but um, 
all my friends are doing this. So I, I don't, I don't know if I can do that. I'm like, mm, totally stop talking to them. You, you, you mm-hmm. have an idea and then they'll be like, so I'm confused. I'm like, no, you're not confused. You just tell me exactly what you want. You just don't think you can have it because someone over there said that you can have it. Stop talking to those other 19, 20, 20, where knows you're telling, you no, and start talking to people like me who've lived it and say like, it is possible. And we'll, we'll, I'll help you figure out how, but um, you already know you're not confused. You're, you're saying it the wrong way. You, you're, you're, you're not, you're confused about how to get it, but you're not yep. confused about what you want. Exactly. Um, yeah. Exactly. And that's, and that's the, that's the hardest part. So once you know what you want, all the rest of the stuff falls in place. Mm-hmm. Um, I would do the same thing. I would trust. I, I, I had always had instincts and, and intuition. And I think especially women too have it. And my husband has a lot of intuition. Um, he gets, he's, he's very in sync with what, what's happening around him. He, he grew up in a, in a, a not so great household with violence. And it's, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's like a survival thing. So you get really yes. good at reading people because you have to. Um, yes. So he's, so, I, and I know other men like that, but I know women in general, like we're, we're, we're just, we're not as confident about saying what we're feeling we're getting or whatever. People are like, Oh, you're just being such a sensitive. It's like, no, 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 no. I have a feeling and I have an intuition or an instinct and I'm not going to trust it because I'm going to be poo-pooed or whatever. Um, and yeah, I, I, do, I feel the same. And like going back and saying like, Oh no, you, you're very wise. You have a lot more than you think you had. You might be young, you don't know everything, but you have a, a feeling about something because it's true. I, and I have boys, I have um, two, they're 20 and 25, but um, I tell them the same thing I would tell a daughter is, you know, like you, you got a feeling for a reason. Don't, do not look away from it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's great advice. It's great advice. So what's, um? so after our conversation, so we've been chatting for well, almost a half an hour. What's this, is there anything new that you remember that you told me today that you're like, I'm glad I remember that or anything, any new insight you're taking away from our conversation? Um, you know, I've been, I've been practicing a mantra uh, with me and my clients and, and just in getting them to repeat the thing I believe myself. And um, whenever um, I'm called to these sorts of like interviews or, you know, experiences, and I have to tell my story, or, you know, there's some nuance of question that hasn't been quite asked before. Um, It helps me know myself a little bit better, because I have to articulate my life to people. So Mm -hmm. now I'm listening to myself and what's what I'm hearing today. I think this is the first time that I've put a relationship between that girl who wanted to marriage counsel and the nature girl. I don't think I've ever articulated that today before today. And I'm thinking about that trust yourself thing and how sometimes life will constantly derail you. But if you really believe in your core nature orientation, probably there's a through line in there somewhere. And I just, I guess um, what's been really cool about this conversation is that I'm you know, I know my through lines, but just hearing them very clearly in this nuanced way has been very gifting. And and I believe myself more as a result. So yeah, always yeah. looking for those confirmation biases that help you believe yourself in any way that you can. And this has been one of them. So thank you for an opportunity for me to believe myself again. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> I had a new, uh, I had a, a high school reunion a, a month ago and, and something similar happened to me. Like the people that know you when you're 12, 14, 15, 16, they were reflecting back to me. Like mm. they were reflecting back to me who, who I was back then. They're like, oh, I'm not surprised at all that you wrote a book. I'm not surprised at all that you have a podcast. You, you were always this way or that way. I'm like, oh, I, I was, yeah. Of course, because you're already who you are, three or four or five years old, and I'm 14, and I'm relating to these people. And but but the fun part was like there was no no one was comparing what anyone else was doing, or, or what, they were just like, I remember you. These are great experiences. We had no nothing to prove to anyone. We had no we didn't have real stresses in our lives yet. We had thought what we thought were stresses at the time, but it was like it was such a pure time, and it was a fun time. But we really were being who exactly we are still now and, and we're becoming with 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 no like uh, not a lot of risk and not a lot of um it was just it was cool to reflect on that and like see these people that I had relationships with and I'm still there's people I hadn't seen for 20 25 years and we, you see them again you're like oh my gosh it, wow. it came right back who you were and who they are it came right back from you know 15 years old to 50 something years old it's like we're, we're right back where we were because we're still who we, we're the same people yeah we've grown and had these experiences but we're the same people at our core Mm -hmm. Um, and it's, it was, it was, it was cool to see. And it was like you, I was like, I was reminded about just who I was back then. And it was, it was fun to think about it and and see 
each other through all of our different um same eyes just all these years later yeah, so, so cool it's so yeah. cool it's so affirming yes yes well, definitely so um so if people want to work with you or hear more about your camps or um do you tell me a little bit more about it or how they can get in touch with you and is it just um, for girls you do these camps no no no, no. and 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 it and i would say that i had an organization that did lots of different programs and okay. camps was just one of them okay. um and I would say the best way to get in contact with me is through TonyAnderson.life um, because I have a lot of different worlds that I play in. Again, the healing worlds, um, the eco worlds, the coaching consulting world. So the best way to get me is TonyAnderson.life mm -hmm. and learn about all the ways that you can engage in the worlds and sandboxes that I play in um, is the best way to start. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you for your time. It was so nice to meet you. And um, we'll talk to you and, um, get to know you a little bit better. And I, I know people are going to be inspired by our conversation. So I'm, I'm excited to hear what people think about it. Thank you, Julie. Thank you for this platform. Thank you for the work that you do. And thanks for inviting me here. I had a good time. All right. Thanks. Take All right. Care. Bye everyone. Have a great week. Bye. Thanks for listening. I hope you loved this episode. Don't forget to like us, subscribe, review, and share it. I hope you were truly inspired. And for a little more inspiration, don't forget to pick up my book, Peace, Possibilities, and Perspective, Eight Secrets to Serenity and Satisfaction in Your Life and Career. I can't wait to get you love in your life.